morning. Um, I just wanted to do a quick exercise. Can you put your hand up if you're a morning person? And all your hands should be up because you all got out of bed this morning. <laughs> Can you guys hear me okay at the back? Yeah, okay. Put your other hand up if you love what you do. Yeah, look at this, look around you, isn't that cool? Room of happy people. Um, so when um, Kate and Paul asked me to do this talk and they said the theme is love, I immediately thought work, which is kind of worrying and kind of good in the same barrel. Um, I didn't think 80s computer, but that was the best I could come up with. <laughs> Um, so I really love it when people love what they do. It doesn't matter what you do, but as long as you love it and it shines through you, that makes me really, really happy. Um, this is a guy called Bill Lightfoot. So he's a window cleaner in uh, Brooklyn. He cleans the windows at Hyperact in New York. And Bill loves his job. It makes him so happy. You can see it every day. It just shines out of him. Um, and it's like when you, you go to a restaurant and people are really happy to serve you. And you leave and you're like, she loves her job. That's amazing. Um, so what I want to talk about is that journey of like really finding your happy place and trying to like find what you love without it being really cheesy. Has anyone seen this before? It's called like uh, Ikikai or something. It's Japanese. So the idea is you combine what you love, what you're good at, what the world needs, and what you get paid for. Um, and you want to be right in the middle there. And that's your ultimate reason of being. And I think I'm on a bit of a quest to find what mine is. Um, so I can help other people find what theirs is. So that's kind of what I'm doing. So I'm Australian. I'm not really. That's a lie. Uh, I'm English. <laughs> and when I was 18, I bought a one-way ticket to Australia. Um, I'm also a graphic designer, also a lie. Um, I, that was the last time I had a desk. I think that was like 2012. Um, I am a full-time adventurer, so I spend about 10 months on the road traveling and two months at home. And I am a boss lady, so I have my own company. That's my old car. Um, so this is what I do. So I work with um, graphic design college students, and I basically bridge the gap between students and industry. Uh, so building a community that they can both be part of to make that transition transition a lot easier. Um, this is what that looks like. People are like, yeah, but what do you actually do? Um, so this is what I do. I give talks to students. I go to conferences. I road trip in that ridiculous car in the middle. Um, that's a conference in Florida at the bottom. I interview uh, famous designers and basically just have a really good time. <laughs> um, so my story starts in this tiny island that doesn't even show up in Google Maps um, <laughs> called Norfolk Island. And it's five kilometers big, so it's really, really, really tiny. And uh, I went there when I was 18. So basically, when I was 14, my silly English parents took me to Australia on holiday, fell in love with it, had a graphic design lesson the same year, fell in love with that. And I was like, yes, graphic design in Australia. That's what I'm doing. Um, so I was like really lucky to figure that out really early, because I think once you have that locked in, you can just work towards it. Um, the problem is applying for Australian university from England as a 17-year-old is really hard. I couldn't even apply for English university. It's kind of hard. So <laughs> applying for an Australian university was impossible. So I was like, OK, I'll travel for a year. I'll get it out of my system, and then I'll go back to England. Um, so I ended up in this tiny island um, called Norfolk, and I met a man called Tim. And Tim is my ultimate hero in life. Uh, I saw him a week ago, um, so I've known him for a long time now. And Tim said to me, what are you going to do with your life? What do you love? What is, what is this going to unfold like? And I was like, oh. I want to live in Australia, but it's really hard. I was such a little bitch. Like, <laughs> everything, <laughs> everything was so difficult. I was so spoiled. I wanted it on the plate, and there was no plate. So, um, and Tim said, what do you have to do to uh, live in Australia? I was like, oh, I need a visa. And he's like, okay, well, how do you get a visa? I was like, oh, I don't know. I have to go on the internet? And he was like... <laughs> <laughs> So he's like, go on the internet and get back to me. I was like, okay, cool. So anyway, thanks to Tim, uh, ended up moving to Australia. Um, and I um, went to uni in Melbourne for four years. And while I was in uni, I decided that I had this amazing opportunity and I would just do every, everything I can to kind of get involved in graphic design. And so I started taking on every job I could find that taught me about what I wanted to do. So the idea was graphic design was kind of the central point and I would try anything in that area to kind of see what was good and what was bad. Um, so I was this horrible typeface. Um, I was uh, working in a screen printing factory, uh, which sounds really cool, right? I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this. Uh, but my boss was so cheap, he wouldn't even buy me a table. So I had like an upside down wardrobe um, <laughs> typing away. And he used to stand behind me and scream over my shoulder. Uh, so I hated that. The designs were horrendous. So this is like the nicest version of that I could find. <laughs> Um, and yeah, we had these like horrible like t-shirts and aprons and hats and stuff. 
Um, and it was pretty bad. I also had a job um, binding books. So I was like, book binding, that sounds pretty cool. I'll give that a go. And again, it was pretty crazy. So I'd sit there every day binding these books. It was so boring. And I was like, I don't want to do this. No offense to book binders. It's just not for me. Um, and I used to play this game because the clock was behind my head. And I worked 9 till 5. And we had a break at 11. So I'd be like, I'm not going to look at the time until at least 11. So I'm like binding away. And I went in one day and I was so hungover. And I had like alcohol like sweating out of me. And I was just wanted to be everywhere but there. And, uh, and I'm binding away. And I was like, what time is it? And I turn around and it was like seven minutes past nine. <laughs> I thought two hours had passed and seven minutes had actually passed. Um, so I had all these jobs I hated. Um, but at the same time, I went to a conference and I saw this guy talk, which is Vince Frost. Um, uh, who is an ex-Pentagram partner, um, and he is basically awesome. And I was like, I want to work for this guy. He knows what's up. Um, so I became obsessed with him. So I did all my research. I knew like what work they did, how many clients they had, where, they, where the studio was, uh, what his children were called. <laughs> There's a fine line. There's a fine line. They were in his book, I promise. Um, so I became obsessed with him. And through these kind of series of events, I ended up working for him. And... I hated it. <laughs> My dream job, and I absolutely hated it. Um, and that's nothing against Vince. Like, we had the best clients, we had the best people, we had the best studio. Everything seemed to add up. And I was like, I just don't like it. Like, it looks so good from the outside. My life was awesome. And everyone's like, oh, you're killing it. And I was like, I hate this. Like, how do I, how do I back out of this slowly? So I basically quit in the middle of the recession. Um, and I went to Madagascar. That's my brother, the tall guy. And... Um, the guy in the front in the white t-shirt, his name's Giorgio, but we call him Amani because um, <laughs> they have all these fake clothes over there. So that's Amani. And Amani said, what do you do? And, uh, and Joe said, I'm a teacher. And I said, oh, I'm a graphic designer. And they were like, we don't know what that is. Um, and so I was like, oh, this water bottle, we designed the label. And he's like, why? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thanks, Amani, for ruining my life. Um, so I started to think about, like, why we do anything? Why do we get out of bed in the morning? Why are we all here? Like, what are we all doing on this planet? And I was like, I really want to, like, drill down on what I'm meant to be doing in this world. Um, and I wanted to help people. But I think the easiest thing to do is kind of stick to what you know. So what I know is the design industry. So I was like, I want to help people in the design industry. Uh, so I set up a company called The Design Kids. And it used to be a shop. So t um, students could sell tote bags, posters, blah, blah, blah. They could make money. They could get their name out there, hopefully get hired. And I would try and, like create this community that they could be part of. I had no idea what I was doing, like literally no idea. I didn't know how to set up a blog, didn't know how to sell anything, like <laughs> zero ideas. Um, and so I ended up getting four jobs to teach myself how to do my own job. Um, so I had five jobs simultaneously. I was teaching, mentoring, running design market, blogging, um, working in a studio. And it was so great because all these skills kind of fed into like what I actually wanted to do. Um, so after two years, I semi-retired, age 27, and I moved to Byron Bay, which is a tiny surf town in Australia, and I got this warehouse, and it was amazing. I lived upstairs, I built a gallery in the front, I had a studio in the back, um, and life was really good. And I was like, okay, what am I doing with Design Kids? So basically, uh, I had an exhibition, and the point was to get students and studios together, um, and it, was, it went really, really well. And I was like, okay, I think I should actually ditch the shop and keep going down that, this path. So this became the beginning of like, Design Kids being an online resource for students and helping them actually get jobs rather than sell T-shirts. So then I got really comfortable, and I hate being comfortable, so I was like, what is harder than having a 100-square-feet warehouse having a tiny, tiny space. So I sold everything I owned, bought a van, chucked some graphics on the side, got some sponsors, and I was like, yes, I'm going to tour around Australia doing design kits. This is amazing. And then just before I was about to leave, all the sponsorship fell through, and I was like, shit. I don't know if I'm allowed to swear, but it was a total shit moment. Uh, I had $64. I was due to leave in a week, and I told at least 200 people what I was doing, and I was like, kind of need to follow through on this. Um, so <laughs> I'm like, ah. Oh. I like it when you have these challenges because you get way more creative. Like, I wouldn't do half the things I would do if it was easy. I like that it's hard. Um, so I was, at the time, I was teaching in Brisbane, which is a six-hour drive. So I was like, hey, if I can drive to work, I can fly to work. So I just keep, kept my job, drove around, and flew to work. So I would, uh, on a Tuesday night, drive to the airport, near the airport. The sketchiest places are always near the airport. Um, <laughs> park my little van, set my alarm for 3 a.m., 
get dressed really quickly, run across the airport, go to work all day, sleep in a hostel, go to work again, fly back, drive off, and do it again. So I did that every week for ages. Um, and it was really crazy, but I was so happy because I was finally doing what I love. So bringing those two things together, the travel and design. I was either traveling. So these are all my um, month by month. I was equal between um, traveling and doing all these mini trips and actually doing stuff in my career. And I always want to keep those equal because I think it's important. So at this point, every, this point on, everything I do, I get a point in each bucket, which is really good to me. Um, so this is about a year ago. The money had dried up. Things are really hard. I was five and a half years in, and I was like, this is hectic. Like, what am I going to do? And I got offered this amazing job, and like, dream, dream job. I actually wrote it on a dream job list like 10 years earlier, and they offered it to me. So it was a creative director of two massive magazines. And I was like, oh my god, my mom is going to be so proud, and everyone's going to think I'm really cool, and I should totally take this job. Um, or I could keep doing what I'm doing with no money, living in my apartment, and with no idea what I'm doing. And I was like, oh. And I'd swing wildly between the two, and I was like, do I want to keep doing what I'm doing, or do I want to take the, the good job? And I was like, ah. Oh. So what I did is envision myself in a year's time. Um, and this, the magazine job, I was like, okay, I'd probably be in this apartment because it's pretty good. My bike's downstairs. I'd probably have some poached eggs. And then I'd get on my bike and I'd cycle to Port Melbourne. It's probably raining because it's June in Melbourne. Um, and I'm really cold and I get to work and there's all my friends working there and it's really cool. And I'd sit at my desk and then I was like, ah, oh, that's right, I don't like desks. <laughs> <laughs> this is a bad idea. Um, <laughs> So I called them back and I was like, I don't want the job, which they were absolutely flabbergasted. They're like, so what are you going to do? And I was like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> the universe will always repay you. Like, if you trust it and lean in, it will always get your back. So two weeks later, I had a meeting with a design school. I have a million meetings with design schools. And Simon Pemberton from Tractor Design School said, Frankie, we believe in what you're doing. How much money do you need to keep doing it? And he just basically said, here you go. Just keep doing what you're doing. And I was like, oh, Thank you. Um, so this is my friend Eve. I flew her back from Mexico and I said, we're going to New Zealand. We're going to try this somewhere where we don't know anyone and see what happens. And I said, we don't have a van yet. I haven't heard back from anyone. We're going to, if we don't have a van, we'll borrow a car. And if we don't have a car, we'll just hitchhike and sleep on the side of the road. And you can see her head going, I've just come back for this shitty job. <laughs> like, this isn't even a real job. Um, and she goes, I like the last option. I was like, I love you. So we decided to hitchhike and make it awesome. Um, so we had, at the time, I think like 10,000 designers. And we're like, how do we get them involved in our trip? We get designers to design our hitchhiking signs. So we put it on Instagram. And we put our next four destinations and a deadline. And people had to submit it. Uh, so TDK thumbs up is the hashtag. And then we print batches of four, go to the next place, next place, next place. And then we had a big exhibition at the end. So yeah, it was amazing. Do you guys know Mrs. Eves? She's an Australian typographer. You should check her out. Um, yeah, so amazing work. Really, really cool. Um, I'm just going to play this for two seconds.
five minutes left, so I'm going to race through this. Um, so we're like, okay, New Zealand, easy, let's go to America. Um, so we were looking at RVs like the week before we went to America, and we found this RV on Craigslist, and I was like, yes, this is awesome. It sleeps nine people, it's 25, no, 35 foot long. I've never driven an RV in my life on the right hand side of the road. Um, <laughs> <laughs> smells disaster, right? Then he drops the price of $1,000 the day before, and we're like, amazing. <laughs> Again, like any warning bells going up in your head? Like, terrible idea. Um, so the idea with America, I wanted to kind of mix it up. So this sleeps nine people, and I wanted to create a website that was like a hotel, um, but you didn't book it based on date. You booked it based on location. So at any point, we would have nine people doing different legs of the trip, uh, camping and bonding and kind of coming up with all these ideas on the road. And it was really awesome in theory, except for the fact that the RV doesn't work. Um, <laughs> and we sold it six days later. So this is us saying hello, and this is us saying goodbye. <laughs> uh, this is the Diplomat 2. It didn't even get named. So goodbye, Diplomat 2. Uh, then we spent six weeks trying to find another RV, and we went the complete opposite. So this is only 18 foot. It's tiny. Um, I was working in a studio with Kate Bingham and Burt in Portland, if you know her. Will Bryant also works in the same studio. I love Will Bryant. And I convinced him to paint the van, and I paid him in Mexican food. <laughs> um, so he painted the van, which it looks awesome. That's the trip. So starting in Portland, going counterclockwise. So it's an 18-month trip. I can't remember how many miles, 10,000 miles, something. Um, this is where I am, obviously, so I'm on the last leg. Um, the van is actually currently in New Orleans. <laughs> it died. The official thing is it's resting. <laughs> um, so that kind of, that side's a bit makeshift, but that's okay. Um, but I wanted to talk about like the sacrifices of doing what you love. Like there's always a downside for all these upsides. It sounds fun, it sounds really exciting. Um, it's really hard, it's like, it's not all kind of, rainbows and lollipops. Um, this is kind of what I pack generally, so like minimal stuff, like a book, some underwear, shorts, toothbrush, sleeping bag, just kind of really, really basic. Um, hitchhiking is amazing. You basically put your hand out in the morning and you have no idea what's about to unfold. Uh, I was like, Eve, where are we going to sleep tonight? I don't know, what's going to happen? So hitchhiking is really cool, but you just have to lean in and trust it because it's, yeah, it's hard. Um, this is our second hitchhiking ride. Uh, the car we are in broke down. It was brand new. He just got it from the dealership, <laughs> picked us up, I don't know why, um, <laughs> drove to the highway, and then it died. And he was like, what? <laughs> this car is like 10 minutes old. Um, <laughs> Uh, so we got the police stopped and we were like, don't say we're hitchhiking. Like, I think it's illegal. So we're like, keep it on the download. First thing the guy says, these guys are hitchhiking. They're not with me. <laughs> I'm like, dude, come on. And he's like, so he goes, I'll drive you to your next destination. So he puts the sirens on and drives us <laughs> to the next destination. So not is it only not illegal, it's awesome. <laughs> Um, this is us sleeping in someone's garden because we didn't have anywhere to sleep and we met someone in the pub at 1am and they were like, you can sleep in my veggie patch and we were like, alright. <laughs> so just having like really low expectations, like everything is awesome uh, because you're kind of starting at the bottom. Uh, family and friends, so this is my family. Um, I have a totally different relationship with my family and friends because I don't get to see them much. Um, but we have this kind of weird agreement which we haven't even talked about where I kind of spend like a week or like a really short period of time, no phones, no none of that stuff, like really engaged with the people I love and then I probably don't see them for three years. And so, and it's a really beautiful way to be and my friends are kind of very tolerant, so that's good. Uh, this is Eve sleeping on the airport bus. We weren't even going to the airport. <laughs> we were just gonna sleep there. <laughs> uh, this is my shower, top right. Uh, so the shower broke really um, early on. And so now that's uh, some saucepans and, you know, <laughs> get creative. Uh, that's the van breaking down. It broke down a lot. Uh, that's us ciphering petrol out of one petrol tank to the other. Um, you can't make this stuff up, up honestly. It's, it's ridiculous. And that's us bottom right buying the RV originally. Um, I wanted to touch on money a little bit. I think a lot of people, there's kind of reasons why you don't pursue what you love. And a lot of them to do with money and fear and all those things. And Kate and I were talking about it the other day. And it comes back to your values and what you value. And I value freedom the most. That's kind of, that's actually what my name means. Um, and I love the freedom thing. And obviously, I love my friends and family. But they're lower on the list. Like all these, if I did, I would be still at home. So you make those decisions. You make those sacrifices. And you kind of do it subconsciously with what matters to you. Um, 
And the money thing, like everyone's like, how do you afford to do this? My friends think I'm minted in Australia. They're like, did you win the lottery? Like, what are you doing? Um, that New Zealand trip, three months, two people cost us $2,000. And we went in helicopters, we did these crazy train rides, we did all this amazing stuff, and it was basically just done on a massive budget. So it's just about kind of making it happen and playing at your strengths. And this is my last slide. So this is the reason why I do it all. So these guys are the design kids. Uh, they're all around the world. They're all studying graphic design. This is our meetup called TDK Tuesdays. And once a month, they kind of all get together and get drunk or do a talk or do screen printing or whatever they want. But they basically have that support network that they can be part of. Um, and these pictures make me so insanely happy because I'm not in any of these places and this is all happening without me. So if I can keep doing what I love and be really true to like who I am and what my strengths are and the path I'm on, then hopefully I can inspire these guys to do the same. Um, so in the words of my friend, Tim Leroy, fly straight and true. Thank you. Thank you.